Hello everybody, it's me again. This is my third little art demo. I've been asked by uh, someone to produce a picture of Salisbury Cathedral for them. And I wanted to make it easy on myself, so I decided to opt for watercolour pencils. But I needed an image first of all, so I went online to have a look. There's usually quite a selection. Some of them aren't so good, some of them are brilliant. Here's Mr. Constable, the inimitable, painted the thick cathedral a few times, a bit complex, uh, not quite suitable. This is not bad, but it's a very bare image. All you get is the building. Not nothing much of interest. This is weird. Someone's managed to upload a photo and crop the top of the cathedral amongst other things. Uh, this is a lovely ink drawing which I just thought I'd show you because I enjoyed seeing it. It's an ink and a bit of a washy ink thing going. This isn't bad, this is a photo from the River Avon, but the cathedral is far too distant. Um, so it's not quite suitable. And this one is very beautiful and ethereal, very misty, but I don't think my client would appreciate it. I think they go in want to go in for something much more straightforward. So I found this, which is a good view of the cathedral, most of the building in, lots of trees, lots of landscape. So it should be quite fun to do. So this is the one I'm going to go with. Here's my drawing of it. A simple graphic pencil outline. Nothing too fancy. And these are the pencils. Some of my pencils. Uh, my Academy Derwent's, which I will be happy to use. And some ink tents. Uh, the ink tents are very soft and can get quite blunt at times. Um, so I'm going to be using a uh, graphite pencil too, just for edgings and, and detail, because watercolour pencils can be very soft. I'm selecting a few colours. I want those stone colours, oranges, earthy browns, etc. And I'm just finding some. Probably a few need sharpening. They, they do get blunt very quickly. So here we go. These are some colours I'm going to use and let's start. I'm going to start on the building at the top. Get a little bit of colour into it. The picture I showed you that I'm working from, I won't um, slavishly work with the colours. When you work from a photo of an image like Salisbury Cathedral, because nobody in their right mind could make up Salisbury Cathedral, you need an image to guide you along, give you information. But you don't have to be a slave to the colours or even the composition. So you can alter it. You can make changes where you like. Uh, you could do quite a surreal colour, range of colours if you wanted to. Or even stick to one colour. It's, your, it's the options. You have all those options. Don't forget to use them. It takes time to colour in like this, it takes time to do any work really. So I hope you don't get too bored watching this. You can nearly tell the colour by the top of the pencil. This is a dark blue. I'm just kind of etching in some detail in the tower. When you work with detail on a building, you're not really going to try to reproduce every single architectural detail. You're going for a, an impression of that detail. And that detail is going to seem to appear to the viewer if you place intricate little lines in the right places. So it's a fairly slow job, but it's quite relaxing. It's quite nice to get into. Try not to use one colour overall. Try to use the colours piecemeal, particularly watercolours or watercolour pencils. You don't want to be masking everything with one colour just to find that the other colours don't have their own little spaces.
toning in a bit now, getting trying to get a slightly three-dimensional feel to the thing. Now I'm not going even looking at the original particularly because I'm limited in the colours I have. So there is no point in struggling to reproduce a particular colour on an object or an image like this. It's much easier to go with the colours that you have to hand. You can blend them and I'm doing that here. And that will give you extra colour. I hope you can see what I'm up to. It's a very small image. I'm just getting some edge lines in now to give it a little more definition. I think I'm thinking about it now. Yes, there we go. Some of the windows in the tower coming. You'll be uh, relieved to know that I'm not going to make you watch me colour every single part of this picture in. There are little spaces for the white in the picture where the building is picking up the light, the sun on the reflecting on the stone. You don't want to lose these. You don't want to fill the whole surface of the tower in with full colour. It's best to leave a few little spaces. It gives you an extra dimension to the picture. It gives you little white touches which are really nice to have on something picking up the light. There we go, it's taking shape. The drawing is getting filled in gradually. Looks like I'm thinking again or I'm dozing off. No, I'm not. It's much too interesting to do that. And assessing it, yeah, there's a few little knobbly bits going on that are going to imitate details in the stones. The tower is getting to feel like a solid object in space now. Colour is giving it weight. I wish it was more in the picture, sorry about that. I'm a bit of an amateur in this kind of thing. Uh, probably by this point it had already occurred to me that I wasn't going to be using water on these kind of pencils. Again, I don't very often because I find that if I'm using them in such a confined image space that the water would simply wash away the detail and once the brush picks up the pigment everything gets extremely dark and thick. This is my ordinary graphite pencil. I wanted to get something dark and sharp into this thing to start picking up detail. There's the roof line going on. Never use rulers with buildings if you can help it. it they don't need to be perfectly straight and hard like that. It, it takes away the life of them. Little pinnacles. Okay, that's a lot of the building that is visible done. Um, there's a lot of foliage in this picture and I don't want to be using... There we go, I'm going at the angle of the roof. I'm drawing it in at the angle of the tiles will run on the roof. Remember that those little touches can help uh, with the illusion of that you've paid attention and there's a certain reality in the building. If you just scribble in graphite at any angle or colour at any angle, it will look a little flatter. Here we go, just fiddling with the edges. I like an intricate work job like this, it's quite fun. I'm try not to get bored at this stage. Try to 
keep as much interest and a detail going as you can all the time. If you have to take a break, do so, but don't want it done and start to uh, get a little bit uh, restless with the application because it'll you'll simplify it and you'll lose the edge. Two or three colours coming in. It will be a relief to get to, to have a go at that foliage, have a go at those trees. When you paint or draw the trees, paint the trees in with the watercolour pencils, you don't want the same colours all the way through, but you don't want them to vary so much that it looks like a rainbow of colours. You want the greens to be similar. Unfortunately, three out of four of the greens I've got here are pretty garish. They're a little bit Disney and I'm going to have to mute them with other colours like browns or blues to, to, to numb them a bit because that green is already screaming out from the middle of the picture. So I'm going to mute it. Make it more natural. That's better. That's taken away the glare. There's a little bit of another tree going on there. And remember, you can put your foliage in with the colours. You can give you the chance of the tree to look fairly interesting and realistical by scuffing around, scudding around with pencil to give the impression that there's leaves there rather than it's all just flat. There it goes. And it's normally a 45 degree hatching technique, even with a tree. Um, there we go, filling in at different angles, um, scumbling about, making it kind of unpredictable even for myself. And again, quite a nice flat green. When you are asked to make a picture for someone like this, uh, generally they're thinking of something classical. They're not thinking of something surreal. They didn't want a pink cathedral. I'm pretty sure I know this person. They don't want a pink cathedral. They want something that looks a little bit like John Constable, but isn't John Constable. It's got to be a little bit classic vintage. So don't go crazy with the colours. Keep it kind of dull. If there is a dull aspect to the person who asked you to make the picture, Go with that dull just a little bit, otherwise you know they, they'll little be a little bit uneasy about what you've done. Don't want to sound patronising though. I would add this person isn't paying for this. It's a Christmas present. Which I suppose in a way is a pays for itself. Gives me a reason to get off my backside and do it though. Filling in, filling in. Filling in, not getting too uh, bored, just trying to make the trees look interesting but and varied but similar to each other. This isn't the Western Burt Arboretum with a thousand species all crowded together. This is a, well, gardens and woodland and stuff and uh, there won't be too much variety. It'll all be similar. Similar colours. Um, I won't be leaving that bright orangey colour alone I shall probably mute it down with a green or blue or something. Probably try and get a blue and yellow together, even if it's an ochre and an indigo, to make a green. It's starting to build now. Got a little bit of a white edge around the tree in front of the cathedral. Gives it a little bit of distance. Now I will make a confession. I did actually record me finishing the whole picture uh, and when I went to upload the video, it refused to do it. It said it was corrupted. So you won't be seeing the whole process, which I did say earlier was probably a relief. But I will show you the finished item, of course. So there we are, it's, it's building. And I'm reassessing as I go. I can go back to the building at any time I like make touches. Now here's the sky. The sky on the picture I, uh, I was working from, the, the, the composition I was working from, was bright yellow. I didn't fancy that, so I thought I would put in some blue shapes. 
the blue shapes could be the sky with, with, with the gaps between as cloud or it could even be blue cloud, grey cloud. But I'm putting in some blue sky and I'm going to do that at 45 degree hatch. It always works for me. Continue the shapes from behind the tower. Don't just fill the sky in on its own. It's part of the whole picture. You have to take the foreground into account as you work. So I'm going to keep going across. And at this point too, I'm thinking, if I put a wet brush on that blue, it's going to become extremely thick and solid. Colored pencils are great. Ordinary colored pencils are great. I don't think I own any ordinary colored pencils. I do own watercolour pencils, which are water soluble of course. But I rarely wet them because with a piece of work like this, um, you will find it becomes extremely thick and dark immediately. And with the amount of pigments that I've put on that tower, it would become almost a silhouette in dark brown. So let's forget the watercolour part of the pencil and we'll stick to the coloured pencil. There's my sky going in. Sorry about the angle of the whole thing. It's, it's, it is amateur night, I'm afraid. I'll get the hang of it one day. But at least my head isn't bobbing in and out. A little bit of a darker blue going in with the lighter blue. Start with the light colors first. Keep control of the colors. Don't start with a really big dark color, unless, it's, unless you're painting a night scene where you've got no choice, really. You know, do what's required, but light to dark is a good basic rule. There's a little bit of darkness there, just to give a shape and form to the sky. That's looking quite nice now. It's transforming what was a blank outline sketch into something more three-dimensional, a little solid. go. Quite nice to do. Quite fun to do. Quite satisfying to do. I can always come back to it if I think it needs some extra touches. Remember those little touches, the detail, the delicacy, the precision, that's what uh, goes a long way in art, you know. Here we go, going back into the, the bushes. Darkening those bright orange bushes, probably. I think there's a building there actually, I think that's a roof or a facade. Yes, it's a little dormer window on a roof. And this is my graphite pencil picking out the edges, picking out the detail. Get the other colour, keep all the colours you're using close by, don't put them all back in the box. You won't know what you've used and that is annoying. Keep going, keep going. It's building, it's looking good, it's looking okay. It's always in the back of your mind somewhere that the person who is going to receive this work uh, doesn't have a clue how you did it and they couldn't do it if they tried. Uh, it's not arrogant, it's just a fact. Uh, you don't go and pay to see people play uh, an instrument that you can play better, do you? So why would you ask someone to paint a picture you knew couldn't do it as well as you do? So you do your best job you can. You always want to impress everybody, whoever they are. You know, with the effort you've made on their behalf. There's some trees going in, more trees in the background. Yeah, a little bit of foreground now. There's a yellow frontage. There's some yellow grass on the river bank. And you'll be relieved to know we're getting close to the end of this demo. Um, it is a little bit like watching someone drink whiskey or paints dry or something. Yeah, there we go. And again, be careful. You don't want the colours to remain so bright and bold that they look garish and childish. It takes away from the, from the quality of the work. Filling in, filling in choosing the different tones and colours I can use in the foliage, in the, in the trees. Yep, thinking about it. Okay, so 
this was where I uh, had a little break I think and then look I've straightened it a bit now we're going to look at the work after it's done there it is there it is it's coming that's not too bad that's not too bad um, I've got some red on the left hand side that's probably a little bit over the top the trees over on the right hand side which are almost black look very nice uh, they give it depth and darkness I might have to do that over on the left hand side to balance the work a bit um, you know you want your eye goes to the right hand side to that lovely dark corner and it should be more more on the tower and the building um, so I might balance that up with some more dark greens and blacky browny dark blues um, as a background but generally I'm fairly pleased with it the water remember has always got to be horizontal and that's about it I hope that was of some interest or even some help to you um, I was quite pleased with the finished result um, let's get it in the envelope and get it to the customer um, but it was quite fun to do and I'm fairly happy so uh, thank you for watching and have a go at it yourself I'll pop the image out to you and perhaps you could give it your own uh, treatment that would be nice and then you could share it with me and I could enjoy seeing it all over again but this time all the work done by someone else oh yes lovely okay then stay safe stay sane and remember I'm here if there's any art you wish to unload on any human I will just love to see it I just can't get enough so please be in touch and uh, bye for now